Hello Rock Bags, it's Jade, welcome to a special video. Today we're taking a look at the curious case of Smallland and whether or not Grounded actually copied Smallland's idea. I know you guys saw the trailer that I showed maybe a couple days ago and it blew up. There's like 50,000 views on this little four minute video from me talking about the old trailer from a couple years ago and their brand new actual gameplay first showcase that was unveiled at Gamescom. If you don't know, and I'll just break it down very briefly for you, Smallland's original idea first appeared in late 2017. It's actually nearly three years old originally set out by two developers i do believe from turkey and again i could have some of this information slightly wrong so i apologize but i have looked into this before i've even made a couple videos talking about it but basically these guys had the original idea of a survival game set in a very small minute tiny way and i know the running joke at the moment is from the grounded fans is oh my god they're just copycatting grounded but it's actually possibly, possibly the other way. Now, I'm not going to lever this at the devs. Obsidian are obviously well versed in making lots of games. They're respected, published development team and publisher. So I'm pretty sure they've not gone ahead and just copycatted someone else. Instead, they've taken an idea and they've run with it in their own complete direction. And who knows, maybe the idea really was just theirs and it happened to just come out a few months after the trailer very first was revealed for Smallland. But given Obsidian seem to be pretty much saying a big F you to Bethesda at every stage and turn, they've obviously made The Outer Worlds, which is almost a direct inspiration from Fallout, and obviously when they worked on the Fallout franchise themselves with New Vegas. And they've got Avowed, which is meant to be a Skyrim-esque game coming out, maybe in a couple years' time. They've got their other games, their RPGs as well, that are very much like old-school Bethesda RPGs, or at least Bethesda games they bought from other publishers and companies as well. So clearly Obsidian aren't afraid to take a little bit of inspiration and actually show some really bad nowadays game developers how to make a decent version. I don't mind this, I tell YouTubers all the time, harder, faster, better, stronger. Just make sure you give a little bit of credit if you're going to maybe take another YouTuber's ideas and run with them. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. I'm going to talk about some of the issues with Small Land and to clarify why it's not a scam, why so many people are maybe getting confused. And then we'll talk about the comparisons between the two games and actually why both games could coexist if they're going to be a thing. I .e. Small Lands does carry on its development and how it's going to be great for both genres and how many other games have kind of been very inspired or directly yeah ripped off in terms of originally starting out as a copycat so make sure you like it make sure you're subscribed i love talking about games let's dive into small lands or grounded what came first so it's actually october 2017 that the very first reveal trailer for small lands went up and it does look like these two guys were the original developers or the original guys to come up with the concept of small land this is taken directly from the indiegogo funding site and you can see they had a great actual amount of art concept art anyway at least about plans and future stuff what they would try and do if they hit their markers just like many indiegogo projects which is crowdfunded They've got a breakdown of what they think they would spend, pledges, rewards, and some people did sign up for this, but it was shut down by Merge Games. Why? Because Merge Games bought the IP and have bought the development from these two guys. As far as I'm aware, and I haven't got this 100% clarified right now, but everything I've looked into says that the two original developers I don't think have anything to do with the game anymore. There were substantial problems with their campaign and their very first attempts at getting the game into an alpha. And this is where we come onto the subject of dirty devs. And just to clarify as well, it looks like Merge Games actually refunded a bunch of the backers that wanted a refund or have promised extra rewards for anything that signed up on Indiegogo. But they have shut that down as soon as they took control. They didn't want anyone else putting money into a project until they could actually clarify and decide how it would come out a year and a bit later sid alpha well known in the youtube industry for critiquing developers doing dodgy stuff not delivering on games or reusing assets and stuff like that pretty much calling that the worst and bad side of game development he done a video on small lands detailing issues with people not being paid and certain issues where there was accusations of almost fraud and that the game really was a trouble it really wasn't nothing better than just a tech demo the devs didn't have a clue what they kind of really doing and it looked like they were definitely struggling to get this game kind of made and done. 
This was despite things looking like they were going well. I think they received a grant from Epic Games to fund their development, but it just didn't seem to be making an impact. It was only in January of 2019 the original developers were still trying to talk and find a way forward and had updated saying that they expected an early access release very soon in the next 8 to 12 months, which in game development time is pretty quick. Now the biggest controversy was that the person who didn't get paid correctly for his work on uh, Small Land basically said that a lot of the UI elements were completely fake, they were photoshopped on, and that the game itself really wasn't a game, it was nothing more than a glorified tech demo. There was no real gameplay mechanics at all, it was all just a pretty much rendered in-engine trailer. But that's the past, but I do need to frame that, I need to tell you guys, because there are going to be some people that haven't watched it, and from the comments that I got on the trailer video I showed you guys the other day, so many of you have no clue that the game's actually been bought out by someone actually pretty decent. I'm not some sort of shill just for developers, uh, like merch games haven't paid me, not yet anyway. In fact, I've recently just been giving Ark Survival Evolved devs a right roasting on Twitter, because they're terrible attempts at communicating with their fans. If you're new to my channel, I regularly give developers I see as failing their communities or just not doing what they should be doing a bit of a roasting. I'm pretty critical of all the games that I cover but I can say this now after all the research I've done and I've done this for the previous videos that I've done about this subject Merge seem to be pretty decent. They're focused on bringing collectible editions of games usually PC indie classics that have become really popular Things like Dead Cells, they've brought to a actual physical marketplace. Brawl Out did pretty well for itself. The list is pretty big. They're a UK based developer, and that was something new to me that I didn't realise they actually developed their games instead of just publishing them. They're very big on getting games out on Nintendo Switch, where the markup for physical copy copies of games is pretty big. And so, as a publisher, they seem to be doing very well for themselves, so much so that they're progressing nicely, they're expanding, and they are making their own games. Nothing I can find about this company says they're in any way, shape or form a bad publisher. They saw a gap in the market for getting physical copy editions of very popular digital games and then alongside that they started actually publishing and helping developers make games more thoroughly, maybe from scratch. It does look like they have indeed bought Small Land, the IP, Lock, Stock and Barrel and have been developing it themselves for the past year. So good stuff, and I was really surprised to see their new announcement basically saying that they're going to be bringing it out hopefully next year, and they're going to be bringing it to consoles as well. And that kind of makes sense with everything else they've done, all these physical copy editions, the majority of them have been on Xbox, PlayStation, and the PS and PS4. And so it bodes really well for the development of Small Land that it can come to console, which will, will be a one-up over Grounded. Let's not get twisted, when I say console, I mean PS4. Obviously it's one of the biggest regrets, well, for me anyway, I wish Grounded was on PlayStation because this game really would be absolutely mentally big. Deny it, be an Xbox fanboy all you want, there are double the amount of PlayStations out there in the world compared to how many people actually own an Xbox and play it. I consider myself a bit of an Xbox fanboy, if a truth be known, I just prefer the system, I prefer the controller. I'm not even a huge lover of some of the PlayStation 4 exclusives we've had. Anywho, let's not get started. Don't, don't hurt me, people. Don't hurt me. But yeah, PlayStation, if they could have a game like Grounded, they would literally claw off your left nut at the moment because Grounded is great. Like, it's got a long way to go, but the initial reaction to it, the millions of players that are playing it already, it shows that Grounded is a success and it will carry on being a, a big, huge success. Obviously, it's been helped by the Games Pass, so anyone that owns that is getting a chance to play it for free. But they had a million people play the game within the first 48 hours. Reportedly, they're into the two, three million sphere now, maybe even more. Grounded is going to be huge. Hence why I've been covering it so much. And it has helped me get my best month ever for views, subscribers, and just generally being a fantastic month. So anyway, let's go back to comparing these two now and talking about that original, what I said at the beginning was, have Grounded copycatted Small Land and not the other way around. Hopefully that's dispelled any stupid asses saying Small Land are copycat and grounded. We've looked at the proof, I've shown you the dates. And the last thing to say is that if you go and check out a bunch of actual interviews with Adam Brennerke, the game director, he has stated a couple times now that they spitballed the idea, they came up in a brainstorm session, they knew they wanted to make a survival game 
and they settled him and another developer came up with the idea of Grounded and that was maybe only just about over a year and a half ago. Now the timings for some of this is a bit wrong because a year and a half ago, well it was pretty much still only around February, maybe uh, yeah, around February 2019 and Obsidian actually got bought by Microsoft back in 2018 in like November, October time. But whatever the weather, reportedly Grounded was in a prototype stage just before they were bought out by Microsoft and Microsoft carried on and said yep yeah, carry on making this game. And so we're left still with the fact that Small Land's original reveal trailer came out in October 2017. I would bet good money that Adam Brennicke looked at this, saw it as an avid survival fan and thought man that's a great idea. Not too sure about the cutesy elves and some of the other features but what if we did take the idea of being small and created our survival game that I've wanted to make for a while and we based it about that sort of core feature. And that's not a slight, that's not like being sensational other than obviously the title to get you guys in a little bit. But undoubtedly, in my opinion, judging by the timeline, they must have had some inspiration from Small Land. And they'll be in good company. Did you know that Russ started life off as a DayZ clone? Go way back, way back when, and Gary's blog pretty much tells the story of Helk, the actual creator of Rust, not Gary. Rust started off as a DayZ clone. Now, obviously, Rust and DayZ are very different nowadays. Rust doesn't have zombies. It's much more about just player versus player interaction rather than actual survival. In DayZ, you can go days without finding a single soul in the game. Whereas Rust, you're pretty much getting ganked every two seconds. If you take a look into some interviews with Joel Bidos, the creative director of Conan Exiles, he's gone on record to state there's a number of factors that influenced Conan. It was Minecraft, the popularity, the way that other survival games took a lot from Minecraft. He also talks about the migrant crisis that was happening in Europe then as well, as a more sort of personal level. But I've also come across interviews as well, talking about the fact that actually, as a Funcom project, they were in trouble, they needed to make some money and they looked at the survival genre and they said, you know what, we can do something like that better than what's currently out there. And in that reference, I do honestly believe they were actually referencing maybe Ark. There's no doubt about it, Conan has got so many features that lifted almost directly from Ark itself, but obviously very different games. So you get the idea. All of these games have been vastly popular, but at one point or another, they have actually started off as either clones or really influenced by one particular game or one particular success. And I shouldn't even have to mention PUBG and Fortnite. If I do, you should go and look up your game dev history, people. So, there's nothing wrong in being inspired. There's not even anything wrong in being a copycat, as long as you can make it your own thing. But I like this kind of stuff. I find it interesting. The perception will be that Small Land is copying Grounded, when in actual fact, Grounded looks like it was inspired, initially at least, by Small Land. And if it isn't, if it's completely just random, Adam's never heard of this game before, then fair play, who cares? But it's a nice angle to take, especially as judging by the comment section, you guys are already trying to state one's better than the other. 55,000 views from you guys, that is insane. Obviously my title did lean heavily into the Grounded sort of uh, popularity at the moment. And I think a lot of you guys are kind of recognising that Grounded has got a long way to go. It may be a Microsoft game, but it's still only 12 people making it. The updates are going to come, but they're not always going to be huge and filled with massive content. So lots of you guys were really super positive about the idea of having another game where you're shrunken down and you're surviving, but has got its differences from Grounded. And I'm definitely down for that. I love a bit of competition. I've done videos comparing games like Ark and Conan. But for sure, we can have both. We can have a very different type of game in Grounded, which is more about the co-op situation, more kid-friendly focused more like the forest than an actual big open server wide 50,000 players playing it at once. Which by the way is another game heavily influencing Grounded. If you visited the Ant Cave in Grounded right now with all the heads, that is direct reference homage to the forest and the build system from uh, the forest is pretty much directly lifted and put into Grounded too. Although none of it is really that revolutionary, there's lots of games that use blueprints as a building system. Whereas the first vibe that I get from uh, Small Lands is that they are going to be going down that more traditional route alongside the likes of Ark or Conan, possibly having more players than just your average four. Now Grounded have said they're looking into dedicated servers, so that may change where we could have more players in the future, but we're talking like a year and a half down the road. 
Both games are PvE. There's no PvP planned as yet. A lot of you guys really like the idea that Smalllands is a little bit more grown up, a little bit more realistic, and it's not sort of coated in the Honey I Shrunk the Universe sort of skin. But again, I like grounded style. I think it suits perfectly for that four player co-op experience. I like the fact they've got a story in it. It's one of my biggest gripes with survival games that they don't go out of their way to add enough story features into their games. So I'm gonna love both and I'm gonna be here to cover both of these games every single step of the way. It's exciting, this is the best times. Talking about the features that could come, talking about the features that we know are coming and the stuff that goes wrong occasionally along that way. Small Land did have problems but then problems have pretty much been nailed out of the way. Brand new publisher, new development team. They've got their act together where they're actually showing proper gameplay off and not pre-rendered trailer footage. And so I've got to applaud them for that. So yeah, let's keep the comments nice and civil. Sure, you may love Grounded and you may be looking at Small Land thinking, oh, it's just a little bit ugly. The textures, some of the render, maybe just doesn't look as nice, obviously. And for sure, Small Land is miles away at the moment, but don't dismiss it. I could see both of these games becoming almost like Ark and Conan became some of the biggest survival games of their kind of generation. Conan maybe didn't reach the complete heights that Ark did, but it's still massively popular. And if Small Lands even gets even a fraction of the success that Grounded it was already had, then both these games can do very well over the next two years. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Hopefully I've clarified a few things for you guys worried about the Small Lands uh, situation. And I've left that thought in your head. It doesn't really matter what the answer is. But in my mind, it looks like Grounded actually got inspiration from Smallland and not the other way. Till next time, Ratbags. Laters.